Hey there, everyone. We're going to uh, be updating our 2014 cars to our 2015 physics and car set and everything. So I figured I'd throw a new video together this year to help uh, better understand the SimSync and stuff like that that we use now that we've been using it for a year to install our mod. And uh, we've learned some things along the way to help it better better suit people and in different applications and stuff but anyway it'll uh what we're going to do is i'm going to show you how to install simsync and how to put a shortcut on your desktop for it and walk you through the run process make sure it's set up as administrator such as stuff as that and uh hopefully we can get several new guys in this year the new cars seem to be pretty promising the public feedback that we've been getting on them are pretty pretty good and um they seem to be racing real well in beta testing and everything like that and we've got some new features such as the career management software it, it's nothing you do it's just stats stuff that will be logged through our servers that'll be up 24 7 this year with races rolling off every 30 minutes uh kind of like it'll be pretty much exactly like the old boz servers if any of y'all are watching this that used to race the boz cars you'll know what that is uh, it's pretty exciting pretty new uh, it's technology so to speak we've re uh, had christopher joel rework it for us it's it's really neat i think everybody really enjoy that and and give y'all something to do on non-league nights so uh what we're gonna do is uh, first off, you're going to want to go launch your web browser to find SimSync. And you're going to go to udsra.org. auto fill in stuff going here it's for the back side of the site <laughs> but anyway you're gonna pull up the website and here you come to our website it has all the latest news and so forth on it y'all can check that out if you want um, but whenever you get to the website you're gonna want to go to downloads and you're gonna want to go to the ASCS mod and then I have step by step instructions showing you uh, explaining to you how to install R factor where to get R factor um, how to get the mod uh, and so on so forth and then once you get all that installed uh, you have to have this program called TeamSpeak it's it's all free except for the game the game I think is like twenty seven ninety nine I think and that's not our charge that's that's ISI's charge but uh and then i give you some links to some hardware websites to get you some game pads or steering wheel we really recommend wheel and pedal set controllers um but yeah yeah to get the mod you're going to come here and you're going to get this link here it's going to install or download uh simsync.exe file and once it's done downloading You'll just click it and click run and it's basically next it's just going through all of the stuff that SimSync does and requirements and so on and so forth you agree to the conditions um, you're not saying you're gonna give us your bank account information or anything like that you can read through it if you want it's just really nothing um, and then make sure it goes to wherever you have to have R Factor installed first. So if you don't have R Factor installed, make sure you install it first before you try to do SimSync. Or it, it don't work. But anyway, uh, and then make sure it goes into your R Factor directory here. Uh, it, or it installs into your R Factor directory. 
if you're on 64 bit it goes into the x86 program folders if you're on 32 bit it goes into the regular program folders click start next you're done Woo you're done SimSync okay now before I go showing y'all the other stuff if uh, the best way to keep up with our stuff is to visit our Facebook page and as you can see we have lots of pictures and information and videos and I mean this is where we post everything um, that goes on with our stuff uh, I'll also be in the next few days adding a well a more well put together uh, setup guide to help you with it to, with new cars but they should be the setup that comes with them should be get you through basically anywhere um, but anyway if you have any questions this is the best place to get a hold of us just shoot us a message on the page and that's that's the best way to get a hold of us we we have like I think eight admins running the page so usually somebody's around 24 hours out of the day usually um, but anyway, that's that's the best way to get a hold of us if you need any information. We also have a Twitter account that we post live race results and lineups and such on race nights for our stuff. But anyway, uh, so now that you've got SimSync installed, what you will need to do, this is the shortest, easiest way to uh, get it to find it because it don't actually install a shortcut to your desktop you have to go to your computer go to your C drive again uh, all of your game stuff should be installed in this folder if you're on 64-bit Windows which most everybody is nowadays and then find the R factor folder and right here It'll have two SimSync files, or uh, three if you include that one. But it'll have it should have two for sure. SimSync files here. Don't touch this one. But this one is the program itself, and you want to send it to your desktop and create a shortcut. And then once it is on your desktop, it should be bam right there. So you can just drag it, drop it, place it somewhere. That's easy for you to remember. You don't have to put a shortcut to your desktop. It's just easier to do it because this is how all of our tracks are handed out weekly. Any updates for the mod, any new skins that are sent in and added. We try to add skins once a week. Um, so it, this is very, very simple. Um, I mean, it's almost bulletproof. But... Uh, one thing you want to do once you do get your shortcut made if you don't do a shortcut you can do the same thing through your R factor folder there to the program uh, you want to go to your properties and you will want to make sure under compatibility that you are running this program as administrator you don't have to do this this is just something some users have issues some users don't and when I say issues, I mean like it won't let the program install the files because Windows has some kind of firewall against it. But anyway, just make sure you hit apply and then OK. 99% of the time, if anybody has any issues and they come to us, we ask them if they're running it as administrator. They say no, they do. Change it to that and then their problems are fixed. So once you get that set up as administrator, um, just like this right here it is asking to update and you're gonna to want to say yes and you can say no or yes or whatever we always recommend staying up on the latest software um, hopefully whenever you do get this you don't see it but if you do see it just click yes nothing major and you see it says please wait okay now it's done run it again never mind that then that's just something for myself um, something you see here 
that will not be available. It might be. Um, no, it, it won't be. <laughs> Just disregard that. Uh, it won't be available. You won't see two boxes here. Whenever you run this, again, I'm doing this ahead of time to have this video to post with the link when we launch the mod on Monday. Um, but uh, you won't see this box here that says UDSRA test beta files. You will not see that. You will want to check the only box, make sure it is checked. See, I checked it. UDSRA ASCS Brents. And I'm pretty sure it will say 2015 uh, behind there. But anyway, just to show you, because that other is going to download a whole bunch of stuff that I don't need or want right now. This here is just going to show you how SimSync works. Uh, but anyway, you make sure the ASCS Sprints box is checked. Um, another good practice is to come over here and go to your options and make sure you click this here. It says Prefer Main Server. Okay, just always make sure to give you the best connection to the main server because these servers are actually hosted in Germany. They do have some that mirrors off in the United States, but it, to help prevent any errors, you may have some slower download speeds with this, but to help prevent any errors, if you don't prefer a main server, that's fine. If you have an error, please try to come back and check the prefer main server uh, box and then try it again. Um, all this other stuff though, it really doesn't matter if you are having issues with your SimSync. Uh, it, it say you run the SimSync and it gives you these files, and then you go in the server and it says you have an HDV mismatch. Um, you know, say I'm saying you just ran SimSync and then you launch our factor, go in the server, and oh my god, I got an HDV mismatch. Shut your factor back down and come back out here and click the clear cache box here and run your simsync with that it'll if you click it it'll actually ask you if you want to clear it and you say yes it just kind of clears everything out in case if it's trying to give you duplicate files or whatever but anyway just i always i always run mine in prefer main server it just uh, it's just a safety safety blanket for me um I would never fool with this. Uh, yeah, I would never fool with that unless you come to one of us and you're having an issue, and then we might play with some of that. But that's here nor there. But anyway, once you have that set up and this, the ASCS Sprints box checked, you will come down here and you will click Start. And you'll see it does its thingy here. This one is actually asking me to enter the password. And I don't care if y'all see that because that password changes 57 times a day if I want it to. But you shouldn't have to enter a password. Uh, as you notice how this other box up here doesn't say password required. Like I said, this here is just our test files. And I'm just using this as a demo to explain how SimSync works. But anyway, it starts, you know, it's comparing local and remote directories, means it's scanning your computer and the server files to see what's up. And sometimes it might take it a minute because some files are pretty large. Well, especially if you're initially installing the mod, it comes with all of the tracks that we're going to race on this year to where you can get in the server without having to go to seven different websites hunting up a track pack here or a track there or this TDF or that TDF or whatever. You know, you, everything you need is in just a few clicks right here in this program. Hopefully, normally it don't take this long, but hopefully it'll go ahead and click through. There it goes, and then you'll see it shows you all of these files that it's going to want to install for you. 
um, you can scroll through and see them you know check each individual file if you like and you know, it's, just, it's just showing everything that you're going to download like this one right here says 49 files uh, it might say a thousand files or something like that whenever you get the initial release um, when we release the mod here in a few days but anyway click make sure you click OK don't click save as just click OK and then right away it starts running installing the files This this may take. Um, with our old release, it was like 30 minutes, is what it was averaging people. But that, I mean, you were downloading like two gigs of stuff. I'm not sure if it'll be that big this year, but you'll have you know several tracks for the non-wing cars, and then for the 360 cars, and then for the 305 cars, and then whenever it's done, it will say synchronization has finished. Now from here, you have one of two options. You can either click Run R Factor right through here, and it shuts them sync down. Once you click it, it don't make a difference whether you click Run R Factor or if you click Close, and then go Run R Factor through your icon on your desktop or your toolbar or wherever you have your R Factor. I always just click Run because it's there. It'll say Shut that down. You say Yes. And we're fixing the launch R factor. Now, once you're in game here, um, you'll see the car on the spinner. I'm not sure which one of the default load, but anyway, you'll see the car sitting there, and uh, you'll have all these options over here. I'm gonna go through some settings with you, especially for the new guys. Uh, if you really have your settings off, it can really make the game unfun, and you just want to beat your head against the wall and delete it and never think about playing it again. But um, the artificial intelligent intelligence or the AI cars, the computer cars, however you want to call them, they are not set up to work right. Um, it's just something we're not really focused on or after. We can't really get them to drive like we want. And I'm not really, honestly, I'm not after. Um, offline racing, that's the reason we have stepped up and got the, the stat server stuff together. You'll have places to go race, you know, from rookie to professional driver or sim racer you'll have somewhere in a server to go play and not worry about crashing the good guys or whatever um, but anyway for offline testing our servers are always set to 4 p.m. Uh, this don't really matter we normally have our time in the server set times five make sure you have private testing on that way it's not adding the computer cards all they do is do donuts and stuff it's it's worthless um this don't matter if, especially if you're doing the test by yourself same with this same with this make sure you have but well that don't really matter make sure you do have fuel usage and tire wear on or at normal and mechanical failures at normal that way um when you're making setups if you're testing offline they're excuse me they're not way off when you go into the server because we do have fuel wear tire wear and mechanical failures um, make sure every one of the driving aids are off except for auto clutch if you don't have a clutch I do so I run mine off um, but auto clutch is the only thing allowed in the server next thing we're going to go to is just playing audio and this is all based off of how well your computer is if you have a great computer max everything out if you don't uh, back it down if you you know if you go in a server and you're seeing lots of lag or cars skip or you know blinking in and out and stuff like that 
you've either got too high of settings or your um or if your games are glitchy they, that's more of a settings a display settings issue and if you're seeing cars disappear and stuff like that that's an internet connection issue but um I have a pretty nice computer so I run my stuff pretty high special effects and shadows are the two biggest thing that make an adjustment on frame rates um, auto detail FPS that's supposed to be once your game reaches this many frames a second uh, 60 is you know prime uh, once you go below 60 apparently or like a mine is set to 61 right here once it goes below 61 it starts dialing these settings back for you automatically uh, that way you don't have to worry about it does some um, and don't but anyway that's here and there steering wheel you either have it off I don't like seeing it myself you can have it on and you can see it move back and forth or it's fixed on and fixed um, the vertical frame of view is at 45 for me this is how far forward you are setting in the car pretty much and further back makes the car look really long and makes the speed of the car seem faster because it's the way the frames are passing on your screen the mirrors you have them on or off we don't have them what default view you will have you have cockpit nose you can run swing man offline but once you come into our servers we will no longer have swing man allowed in our servers I know some people are gonna be oh it's a game yes it is a game but we don't like the swing man because you can see the cars too well behind you and block and this and that and the other so the only views you will have to choose from in our server is TV cockpit cockpit and nose um, I run cockpit myself um, the heads up displays all the gauges and stuff on screen you can run it on or off run not on whether you want metric or imperial units miles per hour or kilometers per hour and whether you want the little message box and my Facebook keeps blowing up and I can't shut it down uh, but anyway well, the message center there's a little message box I say run it on because you can see us typing to you and stuff audio uh, you see where mine is set here spotter volume yes they do have spotters I know no sprint cars don't have spotters if you don't want to use it don't use it um, maximum number of effects I'll run my maxed out but I have a nice audio card you can hear better um, here's the most important thing is the controllers tab um, you can see I run a wheel see my input I'm putting in on the pedals and the wheel and such here is all your different settings that you have you know what what control for your throttle your brake um, and if you're on a keyboard I highly advise you to at least go to Walmart buy a ten dollar game pad from the computer section or Best Buy or wherever your local computer hardware store is and get you something other than a keyboard it's it's practically impossible it's 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 somewhat drivable with the um with the little uh joysticks on an old controller like a playstation controller or something but uh, best bet is to just break down you can find momo wheels and stuff like that on ebay and uh, other places 50 to 100 bucks some of them decent wheels for 150 uh, the G27s I think are like $200 now brand new or you can get the Fanatics I prefer Fanatics myself wheels and pedals and you're talking pedals and wheels and you know 300 bucks but um, that's that's up to you but I do prefer or advise you getting a wheel that way you can have more control over the car and then the steer left, steer right, shift up, you know, all the different things um, that you can control your car with. And there's just 
gobs of stuff. This right here is one thing I do uh, advise for sure setting up, especially on your keyboard, is your adjust your seat forward and this backwards up and down. That way you can, I believe default view has you setting pretty low in the car and it's hard to see. And you raise that stuff up and forward or back or whatever you want to where you can see the best in and out of the car if you're racing in the cockpit view um, these quick chat things you can set them up to say little things by mashing a button without having to type it out um, this other stuff down through here really is nothing this is camera views and stuff like that you won't ever have to worry about pit menus and stuff like that because we don't allow pit stops. Um, now over here is the good stuff. I said I'm on a wheel. I run force feedback, but I also run the real fill plug in from R Factor Central. Um, I run it at 100%. Uh, you see how everything is set up here. That's mine. Uh, you can play with it. You can set it to that. And if you don't like it, play with it. And what if you don't have one of the good force feedback plugins installed though? And if you're interested in getting a force feedback plugin, message the page, and we'll try to help you get that set up. I'm not going to really cover that in this video. Um, but anyway, mate, you see how my rates are set up here. Uh, these rates really do nothing unless you're on a keyboard it's kind of like a delayed reaction or whatever you know, from the time you mash go and turn loose the key or whatever uh, speed sensitivity it's kind of like a, a dampener to your wheel input if you're using a wheel or a controller um, I, pref I like myself I like 10% um, just kind of helps keep you a little bit smoother on the wheel um, look ahead, head movement, and exaggerate y'all. I highly recommend setting all three of those to zero because when you, you have the look ahead up, whenever you start sliding the car sideways and you turn to the right to catch it, your head in the game starts looking to the right and can throw you off. Um, head movement, any bumps, vibrations, stuff like that. It makes the car, the driver's head in the car bounce up and down real goofy and exaggerate, y'all. It makes you feel like you're more sideways than you are. And you, it's, it's, I advise these last three to be at zero. Um, controller one and controller two. Controller one is, uh, if you have a, like a G25 or 27 or some something that where you're, your wheels, your pedals plug into your wheel, and then your wheel as a whole plugs into your computer. Um, you can, that's how, that's what controller one is. Controller two is for if your wheel is separate from your pedals, like your pedals plug into the computer and your wheel plugs into the computer. Um, I, I run all my dead zones at zero. Uh, my sensitivity on my wheel is turned down a little bit. And the rest of my functions are at 50%. That's all user preference. Uh, some people run them all at zero. Some people run them all at 100. Uh, just to give you a little something here. Like I'm going to put my pedal, my gas pedal at 50% here. Input. And then I'm going to slide the little slider down to zero and it's like I pick my foot up halfway off the pedal you know you see, you see I'm now at 25 percent pretty much and same thing if I go back to 50 you see where it's at over there on the thing on the slider and if I slide all the way up it's like I've gained input so it's it can make it really touchy like you got a really short throttle linkage in your car or you can slow your throttle input way 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 down and I really really recommend that um, 
honestly not sure why mine was at 50% there. I normally run it at like 25. So, uh, anyway, you can see how it changes everything here. You just, again, that's all user preference. And then again, controller 2 is only if you have a secondary controller plugged into your computer. Um, to join the online races, you'll click the join button, you'll hit race series, and it'll line everything up alphabetically by the mod title. As you can see here, you got like the Bosch 2010-2014 cars. Um, you can see our stuff right here, the ASCS 360 sprints. That's what ours will be named. If you was to go into a server, it will show you. You just you once you join, well, you can have up to 60 people join that particular room. Um, there's different servers up and everything like that. Hopefully, there'll be lots of servers for everybody to choose from. I know for sure we'll have three stat servers, a non-wing server, and a 305 server up. At hopefully, 24/7. So that's five servers that we'll have up for you to play in alone. Um, if you want to, like, the, the weekend and the season thing, I think we're going to try and get pulled off of the user interface here. That way you're not seeing that. It's useless. Um, vehicle, you come in here and you can choose, you know, I'm going to choose Reitzel's car to show you. And then you come over here and you click buy. And then you can, once you click buy, you can come down through here and there's just gobs of options. Shocks and rock guards and rod covers and different wings and such to different hoods uh, to play with. It's, it's whatever you want in here. Um, some cars, I'm trying to see if this one has, yeah, well, no. Some of it. I'm trying to see some of these. Some of these hoods, the skins are painted on them, and they're not painted on that hood. And they might look funny. Like some of the logos might not look right. Like this one looks like it's meant for this hood, um, or this hood. But if you see a hood that's all grayed out looking or whatever, you'll know why. And the sissy panels and um, the front lower panels you can put that on wheel option rear end option you can change rear axle colors and stuff chrome or black wheels with different inserts in them you know it's 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 all about what you want right there whatever you, whatever makes you happy um, again, don't click test, I mean season or race, click test, and it should give you, if you're new to the game and all you have, excuse me, is the, uh, the new ASCS mod installed, you'll see a thing here that says ASCS tracks, and you'll see all these should say, all you should see is like Dodge City ASCS sprints, you shouldn't see none of this other stuff, like, I-30, I-80 I know is out, and then all these Knoxville things like that. That's that's the tracks that we ran last year. You shouldn't see that if, you, if you're if you a fresh install of the Sprint Car Mod. Um, again, it shows you all of your damage, and, and damage is always at 100 in the server. Um, and then once you get your track selected that you want to play on or test on or whatever, if you're wanting to test offline, you just click Load. Shows the loading screen, and you're at the track. And once you're at the track, um, you can again go to your settings and adjust your stuff there, or you can go to the garage. Um, for those of you who are new to sprint cars in general or anything on dirt, uh, sprint cars run lots of stagger. The right rear tire is really big, 105 inches in diameter 
and 16 inches wide. The left rear tire uh, ranges from 90 inches in diameter and you can select all the way up to 98 inches in diameter. The smaller the tire, the easier the car will turn through the corner. If your car is wanting to slide the front end towards the wall, go to a smaller tire. That's, that's the most basic big change. If I mean, if you don't know nothing about chassis adjustments, Stagger is the go-to adjustment in a sprint car. Um, and then gear, small tracks, quarter miles, and such, you're probably going to want to be... 618 or 718 or so um the big tracks you know well i say big tracks like big quarters to three eighths mile tracks 682 655 somewhere in there you want to be turning the car no more than 9,000 rpms um and you want to try to keep it between like 7200 rpms and 9,000. You got a pretty big swing there, but you know you're gonna scrub lots of speed. And then big tracks like half mile tracks like Knoxville and stuff like that, you're gonna be down around like the 580, 590 mark somewhere in there. Um, again, you can adjust your speed sensitivity in the garage here. Done went over that with you. Uh, your brake bias. Feel like the car's not turning in easy enough with you when you get on the brakes. Adjust more brake to the front. Uh, don't feel like the brakes are grabbing hard enough for you adjust more pressure I can't remember where the default setting is um, fuel starting amount starts lowest it'll go is five gallons max it out I think it's 28 30 gallons so um, plenty of fuel to run long events with um, heat races most anywhere you'll get away with five gallons most feature races you'll run 15 gallons or so. Uh, main bypass is the amount of fuel that is going to your motor. Uh, the higher the number, the less amount of fuel going to the motor. The less amount of fuel going to the motor, the hotter the motor will get faster. Um, so qualifying if, if you're running a league we don't run qualifying if you run in a league that runs qualifying always run a 90 it just it makes it lean the motor out and get up to temperature faster to get you quick time easier um, most heat races people run 86 84 if they bog the motor a little bit they'll get away with an 88 most feature races everybody's 80 to 76 I usually play it safe and go 76 all the time and you can go all the way down to 66 if you feel like you need to um, for wing angle we've changed that up a little bit this year too we've limited it it from 22 to 24 degrees that way it's not really getting into the um, oh look it's raining. <laughs> yeah, I've got the RFE stuff plugged in. My game. Don't worry about that though. Never mind. I said that. Anyway, wing angle. You know, you get just a few clicks. Most of your heat race tracks, tackier tracks, small tracks. Um, you'll want to run low. Most or even big tracks. That's kind of slick. You'll probably want to run something like 22, 23, maybe. Uh, 24 for small small slick tracks or super super slick dry slick you know uh super speed but uh, super speed like knoxville big big tracks you know where you need extra downforce the uh, next garage screen you got all your torsion bars shocks and we have right height adjustments again this year they are limited somewhat you have the default set of ride heights here. Let me turn that. Hmm. Well, that's nice to know. But anyway, uh, we have ride heights this year again, even though I threatened to take them away. 
Um, there are some issues we found with last year's cars. But anyway, you have plus or minus one inch of adjustment from the default ride heights that come. And this is the default ride heights. And if I remember right, this is this is exact default setup to, uh, I think, I don't know. Yeah, got a little bit different front shocks. Uh, I still got to adjust some of this stuff out of it. But anyway, these are your default ride heights. For those of you that know what sprint cars are and how they work and everything else, a click of ride height up or down is like, you know, say I just click that up once, that's like adding a half a turn in that right front stop. So you just added some left rear weight to the car. Drive it off straighter, make it tighter. Um, shocks, compression, or a bump, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the lower the number, the softer the shock is to compress. The stiffer the number, the harder it is to compress. Uh, normally, you don't really fool with compression numbers much on the front. You're normally fooling with rebound numbers. If the track goes drying out, you want lower numbers on the rebound. That way it transfers to the rear quicker. Um, tire pressure, if on heavy tracks, you'll want to be at like 10. Uh, torsion bars, which is the spraying rate, same thing. You see here, it has the conversion chart for you. So it says we have a 1025 bar in the right rear right now. If it's tight, click it up, go to a 1050 bar. If it's loose, go down to like a thousand and tightens the car up. Um, left rear, if it's loose, exiting, you can click it up a time or two and that tightens it up coming off. Uh, left rear jacking is kind of like a weight jacker type thing uh, in the physics turns out negative turns whatever you want to call it adds right rear weight to the car turns in adds left rear weight to the car tightens it up bump stop is the amount of uh, bump material on the shaft on the left rear shock you can adjust it in quarter inch increments the higher it is, or taller it is, the sooner the shock will get on the bump rubber, letting it not lean over so far to the left, helping hold it up, keep it flatter, drive straighter down the straightaways, drive straighter through the corner. Uh, but it does wear your left rear tire out faster. Um, tire pressure on the left rear, that's a lower number loosens the car up higher number tightens the car up i know that's reverse from real life but that's what our factor does uh compression the compression on the left rear you know softer numbers just lets it get down on the left rear faster stiffer numbers can hold it up longer stiffer numbers on the rebound hold it over there longer keep it loose through the entry and center part and uh, tightens it back up again coming off same thing with the right rear numbers softer lets it get to it sooner tightens it up uh, stiffer on this on the rebound holds it over there longer keeps it tighter through the center and getting in uh, looser coming off something i forgot to cover here on the tire size if you see it says 92 rd 15 105m that means you have a 105 inch tire on the right rear in the medium ascs compound and you have a 92 inch left rear tire on the rd 15 compound and you see you scroll down a few numbers and you got d10 d10 is the softest it's basically a qualifying tire you might can make it work 10 laps in a heat race and in jump up through the field real fast so to speak and, and hold on for dear life for the last couple of laps but that tire is really only good for about eight laps and then after that you're just 
you're hanging on for dear life, more especially if you really abused it. Um, D15, I mean, our D15s are good heat race tires for sure, B main tires. Um, you might even get away with a 15 for a short, you know, if, if somebody was to run like a 20 lap feature race somewhere or a B main, you know, that you might would get away with that. And then you have D20s this year two you have three left rear tire combinations to choose from the right rear tire stays at medium at all times if we go to seeing a tire wear issue on the right rear and need to add a hard compound like ASCS allows the cars to run we will implement it but right now we're not really seeing major tire wear on the right rear which it shouldn't be because it's a pretty hard tire so I mean it should it should last 30, 35 laps to most of our races. That's what they'll run pretty easy. You know, if, if it's wearing excessive and you've got the 20 on the left rear and it's not really wearing that much, you might have the car too tight and on the right rear too much. You know, you might have to adjust your setup some. But, uh, yeah, that pretty much covers everything here in the... Um, garage at the track this this is the same view you'll see when you go to the servers um and whenever you're ready to race you just come down there and you hit the race button and you see it shows you on in your car and you'll want to shift up and if you got the auto clutch on just mash the gas and it'll take off um it's pretty simple pretty pretty self-explanatory really fun i hope this video helps people that need it or are looking for information on joining us and i hope to see lots of friendly new faces this year thanks for checking this out